like to welcome you to Boy Meets Wellness, a podcast that discusses the complexities, celebrations, and challenges of building a wellness ritual as a BOI, a person who is born obviously incredible. You are now listening to Boy Meets Wellness with poet, motivational speaker, and wellness lover, Evolve Benson. BOI, born obviously incredible, especially when you wear it pretty. All right, Adrian. Well, thank you so much for coming to the Boy Meets Wellness podcast, right? And being born obviously incredible. We are thankful to have you. We always start off, right? Because you are a part of our home now, right? Welcome to the space with your name, pronoun, and what brings you joy. And pronouns are like your gender, right? Like he, she, they, them. I go by they or king because I'm feeling really royal today. But yeah, just share with us your name, your pronouns, and what brings you joy. Um, my name is Adrian. Um, my pronoun is, I guess, he. I've never really like, yeah, he. And then what brings me joy, I would say, is fully experiencing, fully experiencing my experience. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but like when I'm sad, being extremely sad, when I'm happy, mm-hmm. being really happy. Um, in other words, feeling my experience is probably the thing that leads to the most like joy for me. So Adrian, you said being in your body, right? Being in your experience brings you joy. And I think that that's so powerful because the work that you do is so embodied, right? Tell us about who, who are you, Adrian? Where are you from, right? And where are you located right now? Yeah, so I'm from Austin, Texas, and I'm born and raised still here. Uh, I actually wanted to move out a couple of years ago when I started entrepreneurship. But over the past 18 months, I just noticed the amount of amazing entrepreneurs moving here. So I'm just like, okay, I'd be a fool to leave right now. So I'm still sticking around for at least the foreseeable future. I guess we can say I am, you know, this expression of energy that expresses himself as Adrian. And, um, you know, did you ask me the work that I do, like who I am in that? Not yet. I didn't. Okay. But I want to make sure. But so, yeah. 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 I'm just yeah. more so, getting location. I'm getting a little warm yeah, with you. Exactly. So you this, said so Austin, this, Texas. Austin, Texas. Texas born and, and raised. I'm born and raised here and uh, born and raised in East Austin, by the way. And East Austin is like the most popular spot in Austin. And it's like if you come to Austin, you got to make sure you come down here to the east side. So just make sure you just make sure when you come around, you That's definitely a spot you go to. OK, so, you know, Adrian. One of the things that all of the folks who listen to Boy Meets Wellness love that I love is food. So what's up with the food in Texas? Oh, my I heard, God. I done oh, heard about it, barbecue. OK, I so I'm a, about... I'm a vegetarian. All right. So okay. I don't eat I don't eat meat. I haven't eaten meat in like five years, but I have eaten meat in my life. And I can tell you the barbecue is slamming here. <laughs> um, so aside from that, we got the best vegan food and the best like food trucks all over the world and again they're all in the east side you just come to the east side it's just like like a street full of different food trailers and full of different it's like a culture here to have food trailers and to like have street tacos and all of that so it is some of the best place to come and eat and it was voted Austin's the best place to eat I forgot when but it was like a year or two ago Okay, nice. Okay, that's good to know that there's some vegetarian and vegan options because we definitely have some folks who listen. And I have some friends who actually live in Houston, Texas, who were telling me they can't find no place that ain't got pork, meat, or beef, right? Like, and they're vegan and vegetarian. So I'm going to let them know that they need to head out to Austin (laughs) so that they can connect up with you a little bit more. So one question we've been asking everyone on the show is really about the pandemic, right? Like we're still in it. A lot of folks are like, we out. And I'm like, we still in it. If we got, you know, these surges and shutdowns, we still in it. Right. And I'm a believer that we all had to tap into some type of wellness practice to keep us going. So for you, what have you been doing to make sure you're keeping yourself sane, taking care of yourself during the pandemic? What is something that you've tapped into? Well, one thing is, is I take really good care of my physical health in terms of my diet, um, you know, in terms of my exercise. That's been something I've been doing since 2017. And um, just the reality is, is not making excuses as to why I can't do that. Like That's probably the thing that's kept me the healthiest is refraining from you know, um, going back on my practices, right? But aside from that, though, I like to say, we take a bath every single day, showers every day. It's pretty important that you take an internal shower every day. I believe so. So something that I do is I meditate an hour a day. And then I um, meditation for me is what allows me to create space 
between me and everything that I think is me, right? Um, and this meditation is what really allows me to be grounded and healthy, I believe so. Um, and then aside from that, I utilize uh, self-hypnosis daily for visualization practices. And, um, you know, um, there's certain emotional techniques you can do under hypnosis to like um, process certain emotions. So I do that every day as well. So aside from that, just basically keeping up with that and not dropping that. And then, of course, staying social, staying connected, um, you know, virtually with people because human connection doesn't determine a lot of the times like your lifespan, depending on how connected you are with people. So I make it a priority, although I'm a work, you know, um, I'm freaking always working. I do make it a priority to make sure I'm staying connected, you know, so that's beautiful. Say. That's beautiful. And I love that you mentioned that that internal shower, right? Really doing the self work so that the external work shows up right for Absolutely. you and you're able to stay consistent. So you mentioned community and I want to know for you, like, who are the people in your lives that make your life incredible? If you had to name like the top three people who really make it incredible, who do you have gratitude for? I feel like everybody names their family. So I'm just going to get that out of the way and say my family is a big part of like, you know, I'm a big mama's boy and I'm a, I love my nephew. I love like, you know, they're, they're, that's everything to me. And aside from that, my business partner, Nikki, I don't know how uh, good I'd be without her in a lot of ways. She's a really big part of my life. So um, she's definitely that for me. And um, aside from that, I have my own little mastermind crew that I cr uh, mastermind with every weekend. And it's my friend Scott, Mike, and Pete. And we meet every single week. We stay connected throughout the week. And these are some of my closest friends that I can call on the phone. And if I have to cry, you know, cry to them and tell them, like, ask them if I need, like, ask them for help. And it's just uh, they allow me to feel safe enough to be me if that makes sense. And um, I would say that's probably the biggest thing for me as aside from like, you know, the mastermind me and you are a part of yes. my closest friends, I would say is that. Okay, nice. Thank you for sharing that you're a mama's boy too. I, I seen that photo you posted recently on social media about you getting your neck, neck tatted up and how your mama was like, no, don't yep, do it. <laughs> yep. She was like, nope, nope. So yeah, still a mama's boy to this day. Okay, cool, cool. So how did you get into the work that you're into as far as hypnotherapy? And I've seen that you also put in your bio that you're a transformational coach, right? Like you really are about transforming lives. Mm -hmm. How did you start getting into that space? Well, to like make the longest story as short as I can, because it can go for a long time. In 2017, I made a decision to lose weight. I just was experiencing, um, you know, I gained 100 pounds. So in high school, I was with, you know, my high school sweetheart for like four or five years. And then it came to an abrupt ending. And at that time, I was very like, I don't care about life and I don't really care. And so I ended up gaining 100 pounds in four years. And then one day, so 100 pounds in four years is tremendous, right? And yeah, definitely. It got to one point where I hit up my friend one day to come over and, you know, Hey man, I smoked some weed and let's hang out. So I called him to come over and I opened up the door. I didn't have my shirt on. And he just tells me straight up, like, dude, what the, like you, you, you got fat, like you got really overweight. And I think for the first time it stung. So mm. I told myself like, all right, this is it. I'm about to lose all this weight. That's what led me on a 91 pound weight loss journey in a nine month time span, time span. So within nine months, I lost 91 pounds. And I don't know if you've ever been on that big of a journey, but Mm -hmm. it is I mean it, your life will not be the same <laughs> so my life was completely different that's what started my fitness business but as I started my fitness business this thing that I this term I really don't like using it a lot because it's really watered down but for communicating and just getting it across like in my spiritual awakening happened started to happen in other words I started to realize parts of myself that have been all have always been there I just never thought were there and um, these things came through reading spiritual text. And after I got done reading those kind of texts, I started realizing I want to experience what these things are talking about. And that's what led me into closing my eyes and being as still as I can for long periods of time. Throughout that time, I was able to see the compulsions of, one owns mind, of one's own mind, you know, how our minds are very compulsive. And, and um, I started tying everything together one day. I was like, Okay, so I have this fitness program, like I'm, ch I'm changing people's lives, but 
some people pay me $5,000 and they change their entire life and they take advantage and, you know, their life forever change. And some people pay me $5,000 and they just drop the ball, drop their commitments and don't do anything in the program and disappear. And I'm like, okay, I'm watching my own compulsions. In other words, I'm starting to understand why I'm behaving the way I'm behaving. What if I understood why other people behave the way they behave? Because if I can understand why other people behave the way they behave, um, ideally, theoretically, I can build a 100% success rate in my program, right? I was like, I can help people like change the fundamentals of their behavior, which led me on this entire rabbit hole of like studying human beings and like, you know, my first inclination was, do you got to go to school and start, you know, go, be, go become a psychologist, go study that. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, there's such thing called YouTube. I believe it's not necessary to go back to school. So I just YouTubed, Googled my way to understanding the way that our minds actually work. And by the way, guys, like all the education you need is like online. And so that's what it really it, is. Exactly. That's what led my curiosity to really like venturing off into it. And then I stumbled upon something called hypnosis. And um, it was really interesting because I was trying to find the most effective way of changing behavior. Because I was like, if I can go and change other people's behavior, like I'm, I can I'm going to be very honest. A lot of it was motivated to help other people at the same exact time. I'm like, I'm going to be able to get what I want when I'm helping mm -hmm. all of these people. Like when I'm helping people get what they want, like Zig Ziglar says, you're going to get what you want. And um, so with that being said, I wanted to be as effective as I could be with changing human behavior. And I started looking at different um, tools. You know, I, I liked mindset. You know, I was loved books. Everybody kind of told me, Adrian, you're like this mindset guy. I'm like, I know, but I want to have an, a tool, an actual system that is predictable and systematic and practical, repeatable. I can take people through to change their life. Trying to I'm get like, to your 100 percent. Exactly. I'm like, I need to find this tool. And I believed in it. I believe that you could find it. So I started looking into certain therapy. So I looked at coaching. Life coaching has a success rate of 22 percent. The coaching industry um, that we're in today, um, the coaching industry itself is sitting around like a 31% success rate, like the big picture. And this is not sports coaching. This is like personal coaching. And then the therapy business has a 44% success rate. So I was looking at all of these like traditional forms of like CBT, traditional forms of therapy. Again, this is not me belittling any of these methods. This is me looking and observing objectively what is actually effective. And looking at these things, I quickly realized, okay, these things are not so great. If I'm going to be the best at changing human behavior, I got to find something better. And then I read something about hypnosis having a 93% success rate. That really piqued my interest. I was like a 93% success. It kind of was unbelievable to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I am very convinced that only fools believe something to be true without internally validating it. So I was like, let me internally validate what this can do. I had an extreme, and you're going to like this, <laughs> extreme fear of public speaking, mm. um, an extreme fear of putting myself out there, like networking. Um, so fun fact, I used to rap and make music. And I, I could hear it. I could hear it in your voice. <laughs> okay, you know so what? at I'm the end of the interview, I might have to get you to freestyle. You know, I, I, you know what? I'm going to have to send you something. But anyways, <laughs> um, it got to the point where, like the point I'm getting at is, I was so socially anxious that I got I had two shows booked because my friends had their own little promotion company and I was like really good friends with them. So he was like, hey, bro, I mean, you got all these songs. Might as well get on a stage and start rapping. I was like, all right, cool. But the moment that those dates came up, sweating like a mother, just going crazy, really <laughs> sad. I'm like, I can't like I'm getting really anxious. And I call up my friend. Hey, man, I'm sick. I'm throwing up. Well, I wasn't sick. I just chickened the hell out. So like my fear was that bad. I had a really tremendous fear. And um, I don't know if you can see, but I also have, as you're paying attention to my voice, I'm curious if you can notice the two speech impediments I have. Mm -hmm. So in terms of speech impediments, I do have a lisp. This microphone does not hide that. <laughs> <laughs> the is when it comes to Shouts my Shout out to all the lisp kids. I have one too. And I had one growing up. Shout out Beautiful. to all of us. Yes, yes. And, that, and see, and that was very, made me like in that in my R's. 
So my R's, you know, I'm, I got really good at them. But there's a couple of words like horror. That one, oh, I kind of got it right there. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. So that one, you know, still gets me. But aside from that, like those things growing up, and this is what leads me to where I'm at. I decided to go through a hypnosis experience. And through the power of hypnosis, what you do is you uncover where patterns, the reason why hypnosis is so effective is because other forms of therapy and coaching, again, they're valid in their own ways, but by their actual nature, by their fundamental nature, they address symptoms. They're very symptomatic. There is a symptomatic approach. Hypnosis is a root approach. It's like, okay, why? I don't care that you're procrastinating or I know this sounds bad, but also saying things like, Hey, I'm, I don't, I'm not really entertained with the idea that you're really anxious and overwhelmed right now. What I'm focused on is why are you anxious and overwhelmed? You can tell me it's because of your business, but why are you putting yourself in that predicament in the first place? And so for me, it was getting down to that. And in my experience, I came back to being fine in, in, in that hypnosis experience. And this is what led me to doing it. In that hypnosis experience, I went back to a scene, a memory where I was five years old. I was sitting at a table and um, because my, my hypnotist was helping me get rid of this fear of public speaking, right? So we had to figure out where it came from. I was sitting at this table and I just got done eating my food. And at the time, I remember I didn't like milk. I only liked the little juices. And I drank a juice and I was still thirsty. So my teacher's table, the teacher, they had this table that were right next to ours. And I called Miss Elder name, Miss Williams. And I was like, uh, can I get another drink, another juice? Because I'm dusty. I try to say thirsty, but at five years old, it came out dusty. I'm dusty. And then my cousin, of course, like me and her, we grew up like this and we're still really close. Of course, she didn't mean to do this. She was just being five years old, but she mocked me. All right. She mocked the, my word of saying dusty. She goes, huh, dusty. She says it. One kid, two kid, three kid, four kids start laughing. Next thing you know, the whole table is laughing at me. And in that moment, I go, huh, something is wrong with me because I can't speak up. I can't speak mm -hmm. right. And that is where I picked up this pattern of being quiet, of not saying what I wanted to say, of not speaking up. Because if I speak up, there's a chance that I can get made fun of. And my mind is going to associate that with pain, which means my mind will do everything in its power to keep me from that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, get away, get away. Speaking, exactly. I don't want to speak. No, exactly. they're going to all laugh at me. Exactly. And uh, look at me now. I still have these speech impediments, but I own them, right? I have a podcast with well over a thousand listeners every single week, and it's growing. Um, I literally use my voice as a hypnotist every single day. I've spoken on like 13 stages, and i am got more lined up for this year. Like, I'm clearly over this fear. And then when I was able to eliminate this, I realized, wow, this thing is real. So let me figure out how I can learn how to do this too and help people with it. But I wanted to give myself a power, a powerful reason to do that. And I was like, what is my reason to do that? Well, if you look at human behavior, about 80, about 98% of your human behavior, all of your daily behavior patterns come from decisions you made in between the ages of zero and eight. Those decisions you make during that time are very crucial. And I'll dive more into that later. But those decisions are crucial. And that leads to the things we're dealing with today, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time. And so I told myself, all of the problems in today's world are coming because of our upbringing, world hunger. We have more than enough food to be feeding the entire world 100 times over. So clearly, that's coming from ill thought. That's coming from stupidity. That's coming from a stupid upbringing. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying the word stupid because in the words of this is the way you interpret it. So uh, we got this, the war on drugs. Same exact thing. The upbringing is why you're doing that. We got this war on war. Same exact thing. We got all of these things. But at the most fundamental level, all of those things are happening because of there's a lack of consciousness there. Mm. And... I just said, well, clearly it's not too late to relive your childhood because I just did that in that session because in that moment, I relived that moment and I gave myself a new perspective. I said, look, I'm so damn unique. The universe had to make sure you didn't forget about it. 
So here's my voice. Here's how I talk. You can't forget this lisp. Mm -hmm. And so that is how I owned it and changed my perspective about it. But my why is I want to change. I want to basically change the first eight years of a child's life. Because if we can change the first eight years of a child's life, I genuinely believe by 2075, we will not have the, this problem of hunger. We will not have this problem of lack of education, of poverty, of all of these things. I truly believe that the way to change the fucking world, excuse my language, but the way to do that. <laughs> it's all good. We're, all, we're adults here. Great. The way to do that <laughs> is through changing your internal experience. And um, that internal experience is really motivated by that internal child part of you. That was a really yeah. long answer as to why I got into this. And but you're really uh, passionate about it, Adrian. It. And I love yeah. that you that I love that you're a healer that has tried your own medicine, right? Oh, what yeah. I often do is when I'm talking to to healers or folks, and I consider you a healer, right? Because you want to heal the world, right? That's your ultimate mm -hmm. goal. Usually, it is their own medicine, right? And that spiritual awakening. So often, people ask me who are listening to this, why evolve? Why is your name evolve? Who gave you the name? And I I've always wondered name. that too. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you today. Okay. And I found my name in spiritual awakening, right? So I'm a big meditator as well. And literally mm -hmm. my, my name that I was given by my parents began to feel like it wasn't me. Like literally I would hear people call me and not even hear them, right? So I started asking myself in meditation, what is your name? What is your name? Who are you? And literally a voice said, evolve. And I rolled with it. I woke up in the morning. I went to my boss. I went to my family and it's, it's taken time. And I was like, yo, this is my name. This is who I am. So literally it birthed itself in me Wow, I and, love that. Re and removed the old version of myself. So when I hear this story of you, right. And this inner child, and I feel like there's so much connected to my childhood too. I can't wait till we do our session and yes. clean up some of that <laughs> peace family. I want to give you a gift. The Guided Meditation for Wealth is an opportunity for you to start building wealth and growing your income and having a better relationship with money. When I put this meditation together, I was struggling. I was really sitting in some scarcity. And to be honest with you, that still happens to me to this day. This meditation gives you an opportunity to practice and break through that every day. It also gives you an opportunity to move past some of the negative thoughts that you might have around abundance and money. So I'm going to leave the link to this in the show notes or in the description if you're watching this on YouTube so that you can get into the guided meditation for wealth for free. I want you to listen to this at least twice a day and give yourself an opportunity to build a better relationship with money. What I'm really sitting with, right, is the power that we also have for the current young people. So my question for you, and I was thinking about this when I was writing down the questions, can young people utilize hypnosis? Have you worked with any young people or is this only something that is like for adults? Can we, can we stop it before it gets there? Like, can we give them the practices now zero to eight or even some of our teenage folks to be able to support them? So I think there's two parts to that question. Can I break it down? Yeah, let's do it. First and foremost, what is hypnosis? Right. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I think when people hear hypnosis, they have an idea of an altered state. They have an idea of a um, magician. That's what I automatically yeah. think. Right. Of, like okay, Las okay, Vegas. Great. Thanks for saying that. So, so people have that idea of a, of a magician or some esoteric something or mind control, something like that. But let's look at the actual reality of what hypnosis is. So I like to say hypnosis is everything and everything is hypnosis. You are in a trance right now, Evolve, period. Every one of us are in trances. What the question comes to is what degree of a trance are you in? You can never not be in a trance. To be a human being is to literally be in a trance. This experience that me and you are in, right? I can tell you're a spiritual person. So you can feel what I'm about to say. And that is we're way more than this experience right? We're way more than this body and all of that. And so clearly we have to anyways, our consciousness has to trance itself out, filter itself out in some way for us to experience this level of reality. So at the end of the day, fundamentally, we're in a trance. So everybody uses hypnosis. We're all in hypnosis. What I do is I know how to get people deliberately what they want with that state. So um, hypnosis itself um, is nothing more 
than a state of absorbed attention. Okay. So for example, whenever you are on the, whenever you're on your phone and let's say you see an ad come up and that headline was great. The next line was great. You kept going and going. Next thing you know, you click the net, you click the learn more tab. Next thing you know, you click in the order tab, you're pulling your wallet out and you're paying for something. That is a straight hypnotic trance right there. You fall, like when you fall into that state, that's the exact state people fall into when they sit in front of me for a session, right? When you're working out and the whole world disappears. Have you noticed that? Mm-hmm. Gone. Well, I can. Okay. Let me ask you this. When you're speaking, Evolve, are you in your head thinking a lot? Or are you just kind of in flow there? I'm in the moment. I'm you're completely just, in the moment. I'm definitely just, in a trance. It's, exactly. It's called right. a speaker's high. It's almost exactly. like a runner's high. Exactly. Yeah. You're not thinking about your problems here, your problems there. You're, you're just in that. Absorption. You're just on. You almost like turn it on. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So um, whenever you, whenever time passes you by, congratulations that's a full hypnotic trance when time pass like when people say oh time just passed like because you'd lost sense of time you got into this unconscious state consciously which means you dip into alpha so we all have different brain waves right now you're in beta i'm in beta but alpha brain waves is where all permanent change in the human behavior happens it's an alpha brain waves and so whenever you're in the shower and you just get like a million dollar idea come out just like you're sitting in the shower, literally thinking of nothing and boom, you just click and you're walking. It just clicks. When those ideas come, what happens is, is it's like you, your conscious mind, you get so relaxed. Water's known to do this because when water hits the top of your head and it goes down your body, it tends to relax your conscious mind. And so it starts to like relax in your conscious mind. And let's imagine this is your conscious mind. This is your unconscious mind. It starts to relax. And when you get into alpha, when you're meditating, you start to relax. This conscious mind starts to go like calm down. It doesn't shut down. It just calms down, which allows you to easily communicate with this vast richness of you, this unconscious part of yourself. These are where all your ideas are at. This is where your billion dollar idea is at. This is where everything's at. So you start to gain access to it when you're in this state of alpha brain waves. So what I do is I get people into alpha very quickly. Um, that's why, I like, do you wear a Wu band or an aura ring or anything that tracks your sleep, measures your sleep? Um, Apple Watch sometimes, okay. but I don't really wear it to sleep. Yeah, so, no, I, mean, I got you. So yeah, um, when clients yeah. come to me wearing things like that, and I, I'm, I tell them, hey, keep it on during your session because watch when you come out, your your thing is going to register that you were just sleeping. Oh, and wow. it does. It does every time like they come out and they're things like, hey, you just you just and their quality is always in the green. They're like, hey, you just got a really good sleep score for the last 90 minutes and your recovery mm. is really great. Mm. What's happening is they're not falling asleep when they get into alpha. Their brain waves trigger certain chemicals through their body to start relaxing. What happens now is the body gets to sleep. The body gets to relax. This is why people sleep eight, nine hours a day, but wake up exhausted on a daily basis because yeah, you're sleeping, but your body has so much stress in it. It's not even fully processed. It's trying to process that all damn night. By the time you get up, you're always going to be a little bit emptier than you were before because you processing so much stuff throughout the night. And um, so, uh, so yeah, that is hypnosis, like in a nutshell, it's not mind control. I can't control anybody's mind. Even if I <laughs> wanted to, if I could, I'd be crazy filthy rich. At this point. <laughs> um, by the way, so real quick, like whenever people think about hypnotists and hypnosis uh, and they see somebody hypnotize somebody, they like, you know, they see somebody say, hey, act like a duck. And then this person acts like a duck. What's really happening is person A is giving person B a suggestion Person B is accepting the suggestion, acting out on their own suggestion. So it's you accept other people's suggestions and you act out on them. We give ourselves suggestions all the day. I'm not enough. I'm not good at that. I'm not Mm -hmm. smart. Mm -hmm. I'm a freaking loser. I'm stupid. These are suggestions that completely hypnotize you. So that's hypnosis. So yes, children are always in hypnosis. Can children utilize hypnotherapy? Hypnotherapy is utilizing hypnosis to achieve a certain goal. So can kids utilize hypnotherapy? Absolutely. I recommend they at least be six to eight years old. Um, So yes, you can do that. 
uh have i personally so y'all can't it? bring y'all y'all toddlers on here because i know some of y'all <laughs> probably was like oh it gets them good sleep and you yeah, yeah no it your does toddler um, or your newborn but yeah we you can't can put do that yourself yet. to sleep you can put <laughs> yeah. yourself to sleep with it toddlers use it when we all go to sleep because when we go to sleep we do this all mm-hmm. of us yeah but so when we do that that's hypnosis that's how i get people into hypnosis is doing that mm-hmm. with their eyes so now you know how to use self-hypnosis literally just do that with your eyes but um <laughs> Um, but anyways, um, the only person I've done it on is my nephew. I've just done it yeah. with my nephew. So yes, you can do it. Do I do that? Is that my expertise? Absolutely not. But what can we do to prevent children from making these decisions about themselves? Consistently, I think the most important things that a child hears and understands, because when people come to me, it's always because they're not feeling one of these things. They don't feel like they're enough. So it's extremely significant that your child understands they're more than enough. People come to me when they feel like something, and people come to me because they feel like something's wrong with them. It's really important that you under, that your child understands or that children understands that there, it's impossible to be broken. There's no cloud mm-hmm. that you'll ever look at in the sky and say, that's an ugly, misshaped cloud. It's beautiful <laughs> as it is. The same exact very way. True. There's no such thing as a broken, ugly child. Very important that they understand that. It's also very important that they understand that they're seen and because when they're seen, they feel connected. Human connection is a real human need. When you do not have human connection, you literally feel like you're going to die. This is exactly why, um, this is exactly why, uh, you know, I mean, thousands of years ago, if you lost your tribe, that's it, you're done. So we're hardwired to need connection. So it's very important that children understand that they are seen, that they are wanted, right? That they, that they are cared for. And, and that's extremely important. And um, also understanding that everything that they want is available to them. Um, you know, because we grow up believing that certain things aren't available to us, which is not true. Everything is available to you. It's a matter of realizing everything is available to you. So when children, when children can understand that what they want is available to them and it's safe to actually receive it, it's very important. And the most significant thing of all is making sure your children cry when they want to cry and you don't get mad at them for it. Letting them mm. laugh when they want to laugh and you don't get mad at them for it. Letting them draw, um, letting them draw, um, hopefully not draw on the wall, but letting them express their creative side without dumbing them down, without shutting them down. Letting them tell themselves they're going to be the president of the United States or an astronaut without you saying, how are you going to do that? Letting a child's energy naturally express itself is the most significant thing of all because if we don't feel safe to express ourselves, that is where real insecurity comes from. People think insecurity comes from, you know, my speech impediment. People think it comes from that they're not good at something, that they're overweight, that they look funny, whatever that is. Insecurity comes from not feeling safe. So if you don't feel safe with your own feelings, like me growing up, I was told it was bad to cry. Real men don't cry. So Mm. through time, I unconsciously learned how to reject my own experience of life. I and now you're to... crying with the homies. Exactly. Now I'm crying with the homies. Like, hey, homie, I need to cry right now. Right? So anybody listening to this, real men cry. Um, and uh, um, but under like just letting a child understand that it's safe to be them. Like, hey, yeah. it's safe to be you. If you want to sing, that is actually really safe. If you happen to like the opposite sex, hey, that is very safe. If you happen to whatever your natural energetic expression is is safe because and people say well if you just let children follow the to follow their curiosity they're gonna tear Mm -hmm. shit up i'm like the reason they tear shit up because you don't let them follow their curiosity and so they end up learning to suppress so much things which trigger sabotaging behaviors later on in life Mm -hmm. if you let children explore their natural intelligence the whole world will change so it could my, take them so many places. So, exactly. so okay. So I know I could send my my younger cousins to to you to get some of this, get some of this energy out of them, right? Because they probably been censored. They've been censored too much. What I really appreciate about what you just spoke about, Adrian, and you spoke about a lot, right? Like really around giving us the science and also giving us really the simplicity of how hypnosis works and the mm-hmm. and hypnotherapy works. And I think that's going to be so helpful for our audience. What I'm really thinking about is we have so many entrepreneurs, leaders, right? People that are listening to this from around the world, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone's probably heard of hypnotherapy, but really how do you support entrepreneurs? What are you seeing with entrepreneurs 
that's like shifting their lives? Is it a lot of anxiety? Is it is it the broke man complex? I'm going to be broke forever. Like, what are some of the stories you're hearing from entrepreneurs and how are you transforming their lives? Because I'm sure all of my homies that are listening to this are like, yo, I want to get into this, but how does this support me as a business owner? That's a very good question. And I appreciate you for asking that. So I specifically work with entrepreneurs and um, all of my clients, you know, um, around six, seven, eight figures. And, um, you know, they're, they're doing well for themselves, but it never fails. And eat, like never fails. I've seen it every time so far. And I've done this work a, a, for a long time. I've done it with a lot of entrepreneurs. And for example, one of my clients, $18 million he makes, and he felt like he wasn't enough. In other words, inner conflict and insecurity, like self-doubt, is probably the biggest thing I've ever seen ravaging entrepreneurs. And even the, and I guarantee you, there's probably a chunk of your audience who quickly just said, I don't doubt myself. I understand that. That is your conscious mind. My friend, that is a tiny piece of your actual mind. When people tell me they're very ambitious, yet they're behaving, I mean, they're very, and I, when people tell me they believe in themselves, yet I see them scared to um, ask for a higher price, or I see them scared to tell their client that, hey, your payment didn't go through, or I see them, you know, resisting certain things. I'm like, hey, you're telling yourself you're really, that you're really like, um, you know, really focused, you're really ambitious, and you're really confident, but your behaviors are actually reflecting that you, you may not feel like you're enough, huh? And uh, it's not about what you think. It's about what you feel. And we can say we're strong, but feel weak at the same time. We can say we're confident, but truly feel insecure. And the biggest thing I've seen is entrepreneurs denying their experience. And this is what, and, and, and they initially come to me for anxiety, for addiction, usually like anxiety and addiction and wanting to change like certain habits and behavior patterns. That's usually what it is. Um, you know, most people kind of mean like they make good money. So they're not like, you know, like, hey, I need to unlock more abundance or just like, hey, like I need to perform better. Right. And it's usually around those things. But every single time, because what creates our behavior is belief systems, because your behavior if you look at your behavior, it's influenced by your feelings. Right now, you're feeling something evolve. You can never not feel. When people say, tell me I'm numb, I'm like, that is literally a feeling right there. You do not not feel. If you're not feeling, you're literally not alive. You don't exist. I believe even after death, we feel. So your feelings are what dictate your actions. If you feel really anxious, that will show in your actions. If you feel anxious and you get on stage, that will show in your voice. That will show in your body language. So your feelings have a profound, I mean, they are the only reason you behave, the only reason you act, what creates your feelings though. We go back a little bit, you'll see it's your thought patterns. If you sitting in traffic, you think an angry thought, you start feeling angry, you start driving angry, you get pulled over all with the thought. So at the end of the day, you will always follow your thought. Thought creates feelings, feelings create action, action creates the results you call your life. But the significant thing that I think a lot of people miss here is then they start doing affirmations and visualizing and let me start doing these things. But you think 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day and you're aware of 12 to 1600. That's it. You're not aware of more than 1600 thoughts in a day. If you were, you would think you're schizo, like straight up. You would honestly think something was wrong, like something was going crazy in your head. So if we're thinking, un if we're thinking compulsively like this, because you're not aware of all these thoughts, which means you're not thinking, thinking is just happening to you. So we get to this point where our mind just runs compulsively. So if your mind's running compulsively, trying to change that through willpower is damn near impossible. This is why, mm -hmm. this is why only, this is why 18% of people by February are still on with their New Year's resolutions. 0.8% are still on nine months later willpower is the weakest tool in the box. And the reason I say that is because that's not how we behave. We don't behave through willpower. We behave through our emotional patterns. So uh, these thoughts that are going on and on and on, they're all being supported by a foundation. And what they're being supported by is a belief system. All of your thoughts follow the theme of your beliefs. If you're always short on time, check your beliefs. I guarantee you believe life is short. Mm -hmm. If you believe life is short, how do you expect to have a long day? Period. So like 
our beliefs follow our themes. So when people say, I'm not smart, man, I can't do that. Man, I'm too tired. Oh, man, that's way too much work. Oh, man, I, I just, it's, it's too late. I'm always going to be this way. Chances are there's a core belief that I'm not enough. Because after all the people I've worked with, the most successful people of our, I mean, extremely successful people, people whose networks are big, they don't even have a Facebook or Instagram. They're not on those things. Working with them, I've noticed three common beliefs. Every time one of these comes up, it never not happens. Number one, I'm not enough. If you overeat, if you overwork, if you overconsume, if you overdo anything, that's coming from not feeling enough. You have to do other things to feel enough because you as yourself are not enough. So you need external stimulant. That's the number one thing I've seen that creates addiction, that creates sabotage, that creates doubt, all of these. Next is what I want is not available to me. Even the most successful people believe certain things are not available to them. Third is I am too different or there is something wrong with me. One of those things. So what I do is I help entrepreneurs realize what beliefs are causing the problems they're struggling with. And whether that is anxieties, whether that is depression, whether that is self-sabotaging addictions, whether that is just shit habits, um, whatever that is, or whether you feel like you're doing great, but for some reason, there's just some internal conflict going on and you're not sure what's happening. Mm -hmm. I help people understand why that's happening and I help them eliminate it really quickly. Um, so we have a 100% success rate as of now. And I can still say that, and I'm gonna be honest when, if, and ever we don't get someone a result, I will be honest and say, Hey, we don't have that rate anymore, but we do yeah. as of today. And about 78% of our clientele get the result in one session. Um, the rest of them need two to three sessions. And uh, in other words, just, just, this just goes to show how impactful understanding the root cause behind things are. But that is what, that's where I come in for entrepreneurs. When they mastered strategy and tactics and they're still not growing, I'm the one who shows them why they're not growing. And I, yeah. Them- and you help them, you know, we always talk about on Boy Meets Wellness securing the bag, right? You're helping people enjoy the bag, right? Exactly. Because it's, it's, it's one thing to, to, to secure it, but it's another thing to really feel good and in ease when and you And also have it. maintain it and, um, and maintain multiply it. Because I've had people who exactly. make blue amounts of money, but they got nothing to show for it. And right. then there ends up, ends up finding out that there's a core belief that they can't make money, right? They mm-hmm. have a seven-year-old who, who believes because their parents divorced because of money that they can't make money. And they never address that seven-year-old. I help yeah. people address these parts of themselves so they can create the capacity to get what you want because you only see new opportunities when you have the room for them. Mm. You'll never get them when you don't have the room for them. You can't build a $100,000 business full of guilt and resentment and wondering why you're stuck at 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, my friend, you don't have enough space internally to receive anything more. Yes, you better preach, Adrian. You better preach. You better bring it through. You're giving us oh, the good my. stuff. I'm just going, hey, you said it off, Evolve. <laughs> you did this. All right. You did this. <laughs> I'm sure that folks that are listening might be in their own trance right now, right? Oh, yeah. Your voice oh, is yeah. so soothing. And it's just, it's been amazing to have this conversation with you. So I do want us to head into our final section, yeah, which is sure. boy talk and hop. And it's a little bit of fun, right? I'm going to give you some some words to sit on and then you're going to give me your phrase back. So I might say, Adrian, what's your favorite food? And then you would tell me what it is. So that's a little bit okay. of that. But before we do that, I have one more final question for you. And I just want to know this. This is more of my personal thing because I'm trying to figure out all this wellness and what they call the woo-woo stuff. What's the difference between NLP and hy- hypnotherapy? Or is that the same thing? Yeah. NLP takes from hypnotherapy. We could put it that way. Okay. Um, hypnotherapy is, in my perspective, it is more, in, and it's, it's not just my bias. This is also looking at, at objective numbers, right? Looking mm-hmm. at objective numbers, hypnosis does roll over NLP. But NLP takes pieces of hypnosis. So NLP is neuro-linguistics programming. You're basically utilizing, the, you're basically utilizing your own language to change your internal representation system. Mm-hmm. And you, what that internal representation system is, is basically your way of responding to the world, right? Like if I say the word airplane, no, yeah, if I say the word, uh, let's say if I just say the word plane, if I just say the word plane, you probably think of a commercial Southwest airline airplane. I probably think of an army jet. Somebody, somebody probably thinks of a 1940s airplane. Somebody probably thinks of a, 
the word plane and somebody thinks of a blue plain sky, right? That response is dictated by your internal representation system. So NLP utilizes your own language to change that mm. reason. And then I use both and we include both. And the reason I do both is we can think of hypnosis, like using NLP, but in a trance, as opposed to using NLP more waking. Cause when you do, when you do NLP session, you don't have to go on a trip. Like you don't have to like get into a state of hypnosis. You don't have to, like you can just get right to it. Right. And so what hypnosis is, we just gets that, puts it in a trance so it's more effective because all permanent change happens unconsciously. No change happens consciously. It's why affirmations are difficult because they're so conscious. And so that unconscious response is stronger than the actual affirmation. But um, we change our lives unconsciously. So that, um, yeah, so I hope that, I hope that makes sense. So they're, that they're was pretty helpful. similar. They're pretty similar, but if you're going to choose which one you want to do, first off, which, whichever one you personally feel called to is what I'm going to like suggest. But outside of that, if you're looking at it very objectively and you're trying to figure out what's the most effective tool for you, um, hypnosis doesn't leave NLP out. So you're getting kind of the best of both, words, bo okay, best of cool. both worlds anyway. Okay, cool. I just, you know, I've been hearing so much about it and I know that you included in some of your packages. So I was like, yo, I got to check in with an expert. And I, yeah. what I really appreciate about you, Adrian, is that you really make things simple. And I think that that makes it accessible for so many diverse people, right? Oftentimes yeah. we have conversations on Boy Meets Wellness about how wellness is often attached to whiteness or wellness is often attached to privilege, right? And I think when we have someone like you stepping into the space, being able to talk about that and make it simple and speak to particular audiences, it also makes it more accessible for the world, right? So you definitely are going to be a change agent and I'm excited to be Thank on the journey so with you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And thank right, you for having me, by the way. Oh, yeah, no problem. You're going to come back, too. I'm sure we, All can, right. we could probably do a <laughs> session, good. another session. So let's get into boy talk and hop, right? So I'm going to okay. give you a phrase and you give me a phrase back. And this is going to be interesting because you said we in a trance. So okay. I'm interested to see what this trance creates for All right, you. Let's see. All right. So money is beautiful. Love is expansive. Ownership is sexy <laughs> because I, I do find it sexy. Just letting when someone owns their shit. I'm like, nice. But yeah, yes. I came up. I came up. <laughs> <laughs> if you could speak to anyone dead or alive, who would it be? What would you say? And what would you do? Who would it be? I would speak. You know what? I would actually go back. You said dead or alive, right? Dead or alive. Okay, so we're so okay. Let's go with the alive. Have a conversation with Sadhguru, and uh, I would ask Sadhguru what he thinks about hypnosis, <laughs> and the reason why I would do this because Sadhguru is like this big spiritual, deep, deep guy, and he like thinks all of this like these tools are kind of like crazy, and so I'm just curious what his insight is. Mm. Straight up, I just want to hear what he has to say about him. Like what? What a guru, somebody who's tapped into yoga and experiences yoga on a daily basis, that union with everything that is. I'm curious what they'd have to say about hypnosis. Okay, nice. I like it. So we maybe we'll manifest that. Maybe that'll happen in the next yeah, few years. Who knows? Wellness is natural. My favorite song is. It's a song by DeSanto LeBrown, like DeSanto LeBrown, something like that. And the name of the song is called Ride or Die. Ride or Die. You are a ride or die. And my favorite <laughs> book is. Oh, man, look at you. I got my library. I got half my library in front of me. Actually, Seth Speaks. Seth, Seth Speaks. Speaks by Jane Roberts. It's a channeled piece of work. Insanely well. Open your mind before you open that book, though. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it's all I can say. That's a very deep book. It's a deep book. And last but never least, Adrian is. Not what you think I am. In other words, I can't fit inside of your thought. I'm not an idea and neither are you. I'm just this infinite piece of energy. So. I say to that, Adrian. I see, I see you how you walked up to that mic. You giving us that, that MC vibe that you was telling us about earlier. I had to. I'm <laughs> Just so you know, last night, 
Fun side note was the first night I rapped and recorded a song in maybe like six years. And wow. I recorded it. Well, it was the funnest thing of my life. And it made me realize I really have this creative side of myself. I need to get back to. Um, yes. But I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you because I recorded the whole thing. It was insane. <laughs> I got to check this out. I got to check this out. So Adrian, thank you so much for being here, for showing, sharing your energy, for sharing your wealth, right? For telling us more about this healing modality of hypnotherapy. How can folks find you? How can they support your work? Um, how can they go on the journey with you? Absolutely. So the best way to just get into my community, when you click this link, it'll take you to a resource that is going to give you an email with my Facebook, Instagram, all of that stuff. I'll just keep it as simple as possible. Rewiremythoughts.com slash rewire. Just rewiremythoughts.com slash rewire. If you go to that um, website link, it'll take you to, again, like basically my entire network. It's going to help you download basically a resource that takes people through the exact thing I was talking about today, like a hypnosis experience for them to uncover something. And, um, overcome something. But once they download that, it, you can put that, I'll give you the link to put in the show notes, but that would be the number one way. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Adrian, for being here, folks. Please support Adrian's work. Get you a session in, get you some love in, right? Do some work with your inner child. And we hope to have Adrian back, right? To maybe be able to talk to us a little bit about the results he's seeing out there in the entrepreneurial world after he works with some of y'all who are listening. Again, this is Evolve Benton on the Boy Meets Wellness podcast. And until next time, peace. Thanks for listening to Boy Meets Wellness. Stay connected on and off the show by following us online at Boy Meets Wellness. That's boy with an I. Until next time, go be incredible. Be incredible.